We should introduce James Lafferty, who has done a lot of work on the Islamic Saudi Academy of Northern Virginia. Um, James, thank you. There goes the microphone again. Uh, my name is Jim Lafferty. I'm chairman of and founder of something called the Virginia Anti-Sharia Task Force. This came after, um, well, I, first of all, I live in Northern Virginia. I live in um, Bailey's Crossroads, Virginia, which is right in the heart of what the FBI calls the Wahhabi Corridor. Um, and uh, I have lived there for, what, seven years now. Um, I attended, I, I saw an item in the newspaper that the Islamic Saudi Academy was going before the Board of Supervisors to get its lease renewed. And I couldn't understand, first of all, why we're leasing property as Virginia taxpayers, Fairfax County taxpayers, to the Islamic Saudi Academy, because I was familiar. I know Nina, and I've read a lot of what she has written. And, uh, and I was familiar with what was being done there. And I actually went there and spoke myself at one point when I was in the Bush administration and met with the officials of the school. Um, so I showed up at the hearing to tell the supervisors what was being taught, because I assume they, they couldn't possibly know, and, um, and explain it to them and tell them they shouldn't lease it. And the uh, chairman of the Board of Supervisors is a man who unfortunately works here now. Uh, his name is Jerry Connolly, and uh, he was then a supervisor. And unfortunately, he's promoted, and he's now a congressman, so he's doing evil deeds here instead of doing, just doing them in Fairfax County. And um, he was chairing, I was, so I spoke, basically I laid it all out, quoted some of Anita's good work, and, um, and he just went after me. First of all, he said that I had slandered Islam. And as all of you know, and I don't need a lawyer to tell me, slandering Islam is a death penalty offense. So he was marking me. Um, and then he just ran it and raved at me about what a bigot I was and things like that. And then at the end of it, he, he had, I could see he had an afterthought. And he said, you know, people from the military at Fort Belvoir go to the Islamic Saudi Academy every week. And he said, uh, I guess you object to that. And I said, no, sir, as a matter of fact, I think those are exactly the sort of people who should go to the Islamic Saudi Academy because they know what to do with people who are teaching and advocating killing Americans. So I would send the military, if the Marines down in Quantico want to go, the more the better. And uh, he was just outraged. So from that point on, I've been involved in just trying to do the best I can to make life miserable for the Islamic Saudi Academy. It is a Sharia educational center. It operates according to Sharia principles. It teaches Sharia. Case in point, a student there complained that she was being molested by her father. Now, in any other school in Virginia, that gets a call to the local police and a report, and they investigate, and, and if it's found to be valid, they go after the father. Not at the Islamic Saudi Academy. The principal, uh, basically took the girl by the scruff of her neck to the father and said, you've got to get this kid under control. You'd hear what she's saying and proceeded to lay it all out for the father. And um, that's the Islamic Saudi Academy. That's the way it operates. What this gentleman read from the textbooks that was being taught there then, it's being taught there now. And every time we complain, and I know the International Commission on Religious Freedom has complained, and I know Nina has talked to them, you know what they do? They take the book and they, they say, which, one, which page is a problem? And you tell them, and they just rip the page out as if that somehow takes the page out of every book in the school. And, uh, and what we know is from good people who have worked there, uh, from the information they've given us, that, um, that they continue to teach this. They continue to teach all the really bad stuff. We, we see uh, kids going on their school trips. Now, a lot of 
kids from Virginia go to Virginia Beach or, or somewhere else for their school trip. The, uh, there were six students from the Islamic Saudi Academy who went on a suicide mission to Israel. The uh, Israelis intercepted them. They had suicide notes and one-way tickets, and they were going to Israel. This is a very bad place. In, it is part of a very bad problem, and that is the growing Islamic enclave in Northern Virginia. I live right in the heart of it. I can tell you it's very hostile to Americans. It's very hostile to any sort of freedom. Uh, I had a television station following me around because for reporters and others, I do a tour, a terrorism tour of Northern Virginia. Because the, uh, the, uh, when I drop my son off at school each day, I go to a Starbucks. And I tell people, that's the Starbucks where these, these evil monsters sat and drew a plan to attack the Pentagon. They used a napkin to do it. And I show them the table where they did it. The 9-11 Commission reported all this. And I said, this happened in my community. This happened in a place that I go by every day. Um, so I was taking this film crew, and, I, and they said, we've got to see the Dar al-Hijra Mosque, the one that's in the post that somebody made reference to today. So I said, okay, and we had a van, so we're going by the mosque, and the mosque has a uh, small madrasa there right on the, on the land, and uh, all these kids are out. And uh, so we pull up, and the, the film guy rolls the door back, and he's shooting film out the side of the van. And all the kids who were playing in the yard ran over to the fence. And guess what they yelled? FBI. Now, my son knows who the FBI is because he gets to see them a little regularly near our house. But the fact is that most American school children don't even know what the FBI is. Obviously, these kids are hearing a lot about the FBI. Maybe it's the posters that are posted in my community don't talk to the FBI. Maybe it's that they're at home they hear this. Um, but, you know, my son has heard John Guandolo speak more than most, and, uh, and he knows all about the FBI. Um, the Islamic Saudi Academy teaches Sharia and it operates under Sharia. Uh, when, uh, whenever one of its students, and you've all heard about the valedictorian, who threatened President Bush and also wanted to kill several senators. And he had some restaurants. I used to have those in my head that he said he was going to put bombs in DC restaurants. Um, it's an evil place. And it operates every day. And it's, we have, to be honest, we've been able to slow it down some, but we haven't been able to stop it. There was a plan to expand it. and. Um, and I organized, I guess, about 1,000 people. And we turned out. There were people from, uh, from Florida and Texas who came for the planning commission hearing. And it was just such a zoo. Um, number one, uh, Glenn Beck has been a big supporter of ours. During the heart of it, he would call me every night and say, OK, what did they do today? And I'd tell him. I can't believe it, I can't believe it. And, uh, and his producers would say, don't tell him too much, because he'll get on the air and tell it all, and you won't get a chance to explain anything, because he used to interview me. And, uh, and I would tell him, and that's what he would do. He'd go, you won't believe what they're doing in Virginia. And he would go on about it. And, uh, and the planning commission, the chairman of the planning commission in Fairfax County said to me, this is amazing. He said, you know, uh, usually at the planning commission we have two people and one of them's asleep. And he said, tonight we have the New York Times. We have over 800 people. They had to open the doors up. And he said, when well, we've got a uh, crew from the Glenn Beck Show. And I said, well, you ain't seen nothing yet. I mean, we've got, we're just going to keep pouring it on until you guys stop. And all the lawyers and all the good Republican lawyers said to me, you know, just talk about setbacks from the road and whether or not they cut their lawn and stuff like that, because that's all the Planning Commission could do. And I said, no, they took an oath. And their oath is to defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of Virginia. 
both of which make it illegal to threaten people because of their gender or their religion or the race or whatever. So I would get up there and just keep saying that to them and it made them very angry because I think I was reaching right in and touching their conscience. And I just said, you know, you cannot, how are you gonna sleep tonight? How will you sleep when there are men and women, young Virginians dying to fight these monsters and you're giving them our property. They're, you're letting them use our property. How can you sleep at night? And they were just extremely angry with me. So uh, the, one of the final weeks of the fight, we did this flyer. And the, some friends in the Maryland State Police were very helpful. They gave us photographs of the principal of the school and the chief financial officer of the school out on the Chesapeake Bay Bridge. Now, many of you know the Chesapeake Bay Bridge. It's an amazing bridge. I, I don't like riding over it, I'll say it. But most people, uh, you know, so they're out there. Here's this guy, his wife has a hijab on, and they're leaning over the side of the bridge taking pictures of the bridge supports. Now, these are not architecture buffs, okay? These are people who are planning to blow up that bridge. So the Maryland State Police said, you might want to see these. So they passed them on to, to several of us. And I made a brochure out of it and distributed it in the neighborhood around the Islamic Saudi Academy. And the last line in the brochure was, don't count on the cowardly politicians to do anything about this because they're all bought by these people. When these people aren't plotting to, plant, to blow up bridges, they're giving people money, giving politicians, Republicans and Democrats, money. But this, the last line is, don't count on the cowardly politicians. Well, the chairman of the planning commission was so angry about that. And when uh, my wife got up to testify, he said, Mrs. Lafferty, I understand you and your husband are distributing this flyer, and he holds it up. He says, name a cowardly politician. Well, you talk about a dumb. I mean, it was like Abbott and Costello, OK? So immediately, someone stood up and said, Jerry Connolly. And then other people stood up and said different names. And somebody stood up and pointed at him and said, you, you're a coward. And he said, I've heard enough. I've heard enough. <laughs> and he tried to stop it. And it went on for another five or 10 minutes. And that's what we did. But if you read the chapter that I've written in this, this great book that Sarah has done, it, one of the points I make is don't play by the rules. One last word about the Islamic Saudi Academy, okay? Because I know that's principally what I'm to tell you about. Um, we stopped the expansion. It is not expanded, but our fear is there's about to be a big new enclave uh, built here in Murrayfield, Virginia, where the big post office is. Um, we think that the Islamic Saudi Academy is gonna be moved there and will be part of this massive, where do you see it? Uh, the plans that they have. and. And that's something else that we're gonna have to deal with. But the, the enclave is expanding. The Islamic Saudi Academy not only teaches Sharia, it practices it. If anybody wants to see Sharia in full bloom and in operation and with the support of the US government and, and the Virginia government, all they have to do is come to the Islamic Saudi Academy or come to Northern Virginia. Uh, but and if you don't remember anything else I said today, remember, this is the time. Now is the time. And this is the time to fight these people.